Okay, good afternoon everyone. I am confident it is actually the afternoon. We had a few little, uh, a little bit of confusion around uh, daylight savings, bless. So thank you in particular to uh, those of you that did dial in early, as did I, to be honest. Um, I've had a lovely, uh, nearly an hour sitting here thinking I was, you know, I was definitely ahead of schedule, but anyway, we're there now. So single touch payroll reporting, certainly the biggest compliance change requirement that the ATO has implemented probably since the GST. Um, but at BDO, you know, we think that it's a brilliant opportunity for our clients to review and improve their payroll processes and perhaps integrate these um, with some of, uh, with their accounting systems in a move to cloud accounting. So today we'll talk about and we'll talk through what single touch payroll is all about, how you can get ready um, and give you, I guess, our top tips for leveraging the real opportunity that STPR brings for your business. For those of you that uh, joined me for my last webinar, uh, where we talked all about maximising the benefits of cloud accounting for your business, some of these themes will be familiar um, and hopefully you'll finish up with, a, with, I guess, complete peace of mind because after last time you were so excited about cloud as I am all the time that, you know, you went away and got the job done and now you live in this awesome, awesome world where you have automation and heaps of free time and live data and a really solid relationship with your advisor. So to help me, uh, I guess, make this as relevant as possible as I can for you, can I ask you very nicely just to complete um, a quick poll, which I'll launch now. Um, that should be working now. Um, just let me know um, if you think you're ready for single touch payroll, obviously yes or no, or if the answer is duh, that's why I'm actually tuning in today, Shay, that is perfectly okay as well. You, I can see you are all over it, excellent. That poll is looking amazing, thank you. Um, I'd also love it if you'd ask any questions you might have um, and share your experiences as well using the Q&A button. Um, my colleague Jen from KeyPay has come along with us today to help me. So she will jump in as we go through and answer any, any questions um, where she can and anything else we will come back to at the end um, during question time. Um, the, I guess um, just a bit of housekeeping, um, the best way to make sure you get the best viewing experience today if you have, um, if you have dialed in on the net um, is to make sure all your other browsers are shut um, and anything else that might be chewing up any bandwidth um, on your machine so you won't get any crackling or blackouts or anything like that. So uh, throughout the webinar you'll notice we reference some specific products. Um, at BDO, we're not product resellers. Um, we partner with a number of key software providers like all the accounting firms do to really make sure that we're providing our clients with market leading solutions for their business. We don't get commissions, we don't get kickbacks, we don't get any of that sort of thing. Um, and in fact, sometimes we recommend other products to clients because it fits their particular needs. So having said all that, you know, all of the products referenced in today's webinar are fantastic um, and I highly recommend checking them out um, or asking your BDO advisor about them. So my name is Shay Thayer. I'm the National Cloud and Advisory Specialist for BDO in Australia. Um, I, as I said, I'm joined today by Jen from KeyPay. Um, and uh, I think where you have any particular technical nitty gritty questions, they might be um, great for Jen. Um, today's obviously not all about me, but I thought it might help to give you a bit of context around why I'm super passionate about helping business move into modern digital cloud-based operating environments. Um, cloud for me is really the key to future fit business. I love enabling business. I'm incredibly passionate about making the lives of our local business owners easier. You know, these, these local businesses pretty much run our world. Well, they, they certainly run my family's world. You know, the weekends for me and the girls look like, you know, we'll go to basketball at our local club. We have lots of coffee stops at local coffee shops. You know, we, we buy our organic fresh produce from, you know, local farmers, you know, and otherwise we do lots of Lego. Um, even the wine 
you know, that my fiance and I enjoy drinking when the girls have gone to bed is from a local McLaren Bell winery. So, you know, many of the things that are super important to us in particular come from local business. So if these businesses are doing really well and they're happy, then we're happy. And that's, that's why I love doing this. So one of the keys to, you know, I believe to making or helping businesses be super happy is obviously staying in business um, and running a successful business. So no one wants a hard slog. And, and I think that's where cloud and digital process really, really comes and shines. You know, when we help um, businesses transition to the cloud, we save them hundreds of hours a year in stuff they really didn't want to do or really didn't like doing anyway, like bank recs and key data and filing receipts and printing pay slips, that kind of thing. You know, they want as much time um, as they can to focus on their business and spend real quality time with their families and their friends and all of those sort of things. So we know that most business owners don't go into business because they're super good at running a business. And look, to be fair, some of them are very good, um, but normally they do it because they have a passion for something that they want to bring to the world you know it might be coffee or fixing pipes or cutting hair or designing clothes or whatever that particular passion is you know modern cloud-based accounting systems and operating systems and processes let our clients focus on their business and really give them that competitive edge in their respective industries because that allows them to be at the front of the efficiency game so I guess for me, Cloud and me, the, the privilege of working really closely with some of these types of businesses and business owners to help them turn all of their courage and their grit and determination into real success. Okay, so today I'm going to take a more contextual and practical approach to explaining STPR. I won't be going into the nitty gritty technical detail of how it all works and how the software talks to each other, if that's okay with everybody. If you do have anything specific you want to ask, Jen may be able to help you, so drop that in the Q&A box. Um, so single touch payroll reporting is, in a nutshell, real-time payroll information sharing with the ATO. That's basically it. So every time you lodge a pay run, the ATO will receive information like gross wages, PAYG and super. And I think to properly leverage this opportunity, it's incredibly important for business owners to understand the obligations and to have the appropriate systems in place to ensure their reporting meets the new requirements of the ATO. So what's going to be different um, basically like we just said uh, business is going to be required to report um, their payroll information to the ato in real time that goes across as we just said uh, poig and super um, you'll need to have the uh, relevant software in place so it does talk to the ato's um, systems um, one of the other cool things that will uh, that I basically that comes from STPR is employees will be able to do uh, a lot of their payroll paperwork digitally, which is great. Um, and uh, similarly, when we come to do our BAS, we don't have to reinvent that wheel either. So all of the PAYG information will be pre-filled on our BAS. Um, and again, we thinking of a, it's creating a, I guess, an environment where our employees are more used to uh, digital interactions and certainly self-servicing a bunch of their payroll information, which they can do through MyGov. So that means for businesses won't need to create any PAYG annual summaries or payment summaries or anything like that um, anymore. Certainly don't have to do any um, IASs. And uh, the things that are staying the same are the payment side of things. So your PAYG and super due dates remain exactly the same. So why are the ATO even doing this? So firstly, sorry, my images are going a little bit quick. I'm not talking fast enough today, my apologies. Um, digital. Paper and forms, you know, paper and form based process is incredibly inefficient, as you probably know. And to be honest, paper is so last century. The ATO is really committed to digitising its interactions with the economy. And this in turn is giving industry, you know, the gentle nudge to do the same if they haven't already done that. 
the ACO for a while now has been looking at a number of different reporting options to streamline um, the reporting burden for business. And there's no doubt that single touch payroll makes sense in the way that it eliminates that duplication of effort and manual transfer of data from systems to forms and then eventually getting it to the ATO. It's also about improving compliance. So access to live data um, at the ATO will enable them to do a lot more data matching across all the different departments. So if you can imagine for a minute, you know, a world where you didn't have to lodge your tax return and report your income to Centrelink and Medicare and child support and all the different government agencies. But instead that was, that information was already available through single touch payroll. It, it just, it kind of makes sense, right? I think certainly the interactions that I have, I think, well, don't you know that already? Because I've told somebody else. So I think that makes sense. And I think the most immediate improvement to compliance for the ATO will be transparency for the government, for those in our, uh, in our economy who are deliberately not doing the right thing. So, you know, it's our understanding that the ATO um, loses millions in revenue each year because, and certainly staff are missing out on, you know, huge, huge volume of, of, of money in their super funds because some businesses are not paying those things. So they're withholding PAYG from payroll, but they're not paying it to the ATO. And they're saying that they're paying super guarantee and that the money is actually not landing in their their staff members accounts so this transparency will benefit everyone i think um, i certainly don't like the idea that potentially my who are hard-earned tax dollars are you know slot might be slightly higher than they should be just because we're topping up those that are choosing to do the wrong thing deliberately so i think that's great why is stp great for business so at BDO, we believe it's fantastic for all business. Personally, I think the biggest benefit is um, a greater incentive for business to consider and adopt what we consider or what we call best of breed future fit software right now. So not tomorrow, like right now. So for many businesses, payroll is a really tricky area and it takes special expertise to ensure that um, you know, the business is 100% compliant. And so making changes in this area can often get moved to the too hard basket. Single touch payroll compliance and, you know, some of the potential penalties that can come along with that from the ATO, again, really gives businesses that nudge that they might need to save them from potentially having some business critical risk in this area um, and allows them to enjoy the peace of mind of you know, best best in class operating environments sooner. When we, so selecting a cloud-based accounting platform or a platform for payroll and accounting together means that the businesses are truly future fit. So they're not weighed down by unnecessary overheads driven by old systems and old processing and rekeying. You know, they can scale up economically as their needs grow so that ultimately they can remain competitive as well as compliant in their chosen industries. I think streamlining of reporting and payment requirements is also a massive benefit for business uh, uh, around single touch payroll. Um, you know, there's a significant number of hours to be saved each year by not having to complete forms and produce payment summaries. You know, it's all done with a click of a button. I think that's great. Um, another area that uh, single touch payroll, you know, really benefits um, businesses is, I, you know, I certainly think in the encouragement of employee self-service of payroll information. So for those, particularly for those employers not using a modern system that already allows this, because certainly the, the, those products that are front of market um, do um, provide this functionality, you know, that's, that's a huge amount it relieves a huge amount of administration time in, you know, um, sending out various pieces of information to staff and, you know, dealing with paperwork and, and whatnot, particularly in businesses where they have large numbers of employees. So I, we get asked all the time, 
oh no, what if I make an, a genuine error? Like what if I just made a mistake? I'm not trying to do the wrong thing. I just literally made a genuine mistake. You know, will the ATO think I'm dodgy? Will I get an audit? Will I get a fine? Our, our general advice to clients is don't panic. Um, like we talked about before, why are the ATO doing this? They're not doing it to catch out slip ups. That is not the intention, you know. Um, the mechanics of the way single touch payroll reports to the ATO is it's done on a rolling year to date basis. So each pay run, the year to date totals are updated with the ATO. So let's just say last week in the pay run, you forgot to pay Sally a meal allowance. Um, and because of STPR, oh, the information's already gone to the ATO. So you've missed the meal allowance. Oh no. So simply next week, if you include that adjustment in the next pay run, the year to date numbers are reported to the ATO in that week and the thing has corrected itself. So all is right in the world. Um, despite how straightforward, I, I think that's straightforward, but despite how straightforward that seems, we just can't stress enough how important it is to review not only the systems that deal with payroll in your business, but the surrounding processes to really make sure that that information that you are providing to the ATO in real time is in fact correct. So complying with a single touch payroll reporting um, is relatively straightforward in terms of steps, but there's some key things to be aware of and to make sure you, and I guess I want to make sure that you reach out for help in any areas that you feel like you might need it. So obviously, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have payroll software that connects to the ATO for single touch payroll. So the majority of the major cloud accounting platforms are ready for single touch payroll. A handful of our favourites include, as you can see, KeyPay, Xero and QBO, which uses KeyPay as a payroll engine. And this is by no means an exhaustive list. There is a uh, list um, that the ATO has on the SBR website, which um, we can include um, after the webinar, if you would like to check your product against that list. Um, but again, that's not an exhaustive list either. Wouldn't it be great if someone actually had a list that had all of the products on there? Um, it doesn't, but it's a good start. So if you're currently using payroll software and you want to know if it's ready for single touch payroll, you'll need to contact them directly. Um, if the software is going to be ready, you know, confirm the timing of the release so that you, if you have to do any work or updates or upgrades or whatever it is, that you have the resources ready to get that done in time. Um, if they're not going to be ready, you'll need to find out if they've been granted a deferral by the ATO so that um, when they will be ready to go, you'll know that they are ready to go. Um, if you are using a MYOB product, there are deferrals in place in terms of starting STPR in there. So I highly recommend you visit their STPR page on their website and it has all the details you will need in there. So um, how to set up your payroll in the cloud. I'm sure you're all familiar with the concept of garbage in, garbage out. Right. So when we're talking about this in the context of either setting up our payroll in the cloud or optimising it ready for single touch payroll, we really need to make sure that all of our ducks are in a row. If your current process when completing activity statements or PAYG summaries or whatever it is for the ATO is to take some selection of reports from your payroll software that you have now, make some adjustments either on paper, in a spreadsheet, whatever it is, because you know the numbers aren't coming out quite right, and then complete the form and then lodge it. This is, uh, I guess you definitely need some help in reconfiguring your system to make sure that when you're lodging in real time with the ATO under STPR, that each of the important bits of data actually fall into the right buckets when they get to the ATO. So if you're moving to a new platform, my best advice is not to DIY it. Um, 
make sure you get a reputable, credible implementation team to do this for you. Now, depending on the software, this might be the software provider themselves or a software consultant or your trusted advisor or accountant. So if your payroll system is feeding garbage to the ATO, you run the risk of triggering an audit because your numbers might look funny um, and I guess run the risk of being, you know, unintentionally but pretty seriously non-compliant with things like SGC and PAYG. Now, that doesn't have to sound all as daunting, you know, or it, does, it, doesn't, it isn't actually as daunting as it all sounds and seems. If you're not already using payroll software at all, you can access a market-leading single-touch payroll-ready system like KeyPay, for example, for as little as $4 per employee per payroll. I don't know about you, but I spend a lot more than that on coffee. So they're very accessible. So the second thing you need to do to get ready to comply with STPR is check your payroll processes. Again, we can't stress enough how important it is to review not only the system, but the surrounding processes to make sure um, all the data is coming through to the ATO correctly. We recommend checking all of your, pay your payroll procedures, but obviously specifically including PAYG and super, leave allowances as well, timeliness of payments, all of that sort of stuff, as well as your surrounding HR practices to make sure that you're complying as well with the Fair Work Act. You know, the execution of the Fair Work Act is getting stronger and stronger with, you know, the legislation very heavily stacked in favour of protecting the employee, which we know. So what we're seeing is even really well-intentioned employers can get caught out by accidentally doing the wrong thing. And they open themselves up to being named and shamed by the ombudsman and, you know, potentially facing really large penalties. So STPR will increase the visibility of the naughty kids, if you like, which in my opinion, like I said before, is essential for, you know, employees and the economy in general. But what it does mean is, you know, those of us that are wanting to, that, that do want to do the right thing, must have all our compliance ducks in a row so we don't accidentally get caught up in this naming and shaming and this, this very... Um, tight circle around, um, around the Fair Work Act. So in reviewing payroll systems and processes for clients, we regularly see um, and need to correct some of the following pitfalls. So often employees are unintentionally paid below the applicable award. Awards are tricky. You know, I think payroll is incredibly tricky just on its own. You know, the most common issue that we see um, relates to payment of allowances, for example. So particularly motor vehicle allowances. What we see is employers are treating these as reimbursements instead of allowances. And so they're not actually withholding the correct amount of PAYG. Um, and they're not considering those allowances in terms of super guarantee either. Another thing we see commonly is again, related, but incorrect withholding of PAYG. So not only do employers have an obligation to correctly report and pay PAYG to the ATO, we know that, but if they don't do that right, what happens is when their staff lodge their tax return at the end of the year, they might end up with a, a massive tax bill. And, you know, that could put them under significant financial stress and certainly they won't be a very happy camper. Another area we see really commonly, and again, um, on balance, none of these things are done intentionally. It is all, um, you didn't know what I didn't know mostly. So what we often see is, um, you know, poorly put together salary packaging um, arrangements. And the rules around these are incredibly tricky. Um, and we often see uh, employers agreeing to package things, you know, during the, even through the recruitment process that create a ripple effect of problems for the business. So for example, they might uh, provide this new uh, employee with a car as part of their package, but they didn't consider the FBT effects of this. 
Another thing we see commonly is um, an incorrect allocation of payroll related transactions in the accounting system. What does that mean? It just means really bad coding of payroll stuff in the accounts. So particularly where business owners do their own payroll or have DIY'd their payroll system or have, you know, probably a less than adequately qualified or experienced person doing the payroll, we see items uh, in particular that perhaps should be on the balance sheet recon recognised on the P&L. So what does that mean in real life? For those of you who aren't accountants, that means that, you know, expenses are overstated, so profit is lower, so the business isn't paying as much tax as it should. Um, and that might sound like a sneaky way to get out of paying tax, but it's incorrect. And if you got an audit by the ATO, um, this would require correction, there'd be back pay and there'd be penalties. One of the other things we see as well is um, that because of the timing difference between um, lodging and, and paying um, obligations around PAYG and super, some businesses really struggle with the cash flow side of it. So it's a common but incredibly risky technique for some business owners to use that deferred payment as a way to sort of prop up their cash flow for the operations of their business. So think about it this way. So the PAYG is withheld from wages every week if they have a weekly payroll. And then the, um, so the business owner effectively leaves that PAYG and super sitting in the bank until the end of the month or the quarter when it's due. So what we see so often is, oh no, the money's gone. I don't have any money to pay these things that I need to pay. And it's a really dangerous practice because it misinforms the business owner as to the actual true cash levels in the business and perhaps even the performance of the business, to be fair. One of the other things we see is um, a lack of transparency for staff and um, even the business owner around accrued leave. So um, leave rules are governed by a mixture of awards and um, state-based long service leave legislation. And again, this makes them really tricky. There is not one piece of software in the land that properly calculates long service leave accrual and payment 100% accurately in all cases for all states. So it really takes a very skilled operator to get this right every time. Um, in the case where payroll systems are outdated or perhaps there's no software, payroll software in place at all, employees have no visibility over what is actually their legal entitlement to leave. This is really not good. The last thing we see quite commonly when we're reviewing um, the payroll environments for clients is um, that, again, um, the employee entitlements are not correctly recognised in the accounting system. So, um, in accounting terms, this means that uh, we can't see leave on the balance sheet. Um, what does this mean in real life? It means that, you know, if leave is not properly calculated or recorded, then um, the liabilities of the business are, can be materially misstated. So basically they're lower than they should be. And this has a flow on effect because it, 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 it indicate, well, it, what it can indicate is that the, the business, um, the position of the business is actually much better than it is. We have all sorts of problems when we come to actually paying out some of those leave um, accruals as well. So a little bit later, um, we'll run through what um, BDO considers to be best practice tips for payroll. And that'll help, I guess, um, help you avoid the pitfalls that we've just talked about. So the third thing you need to do to comply with um, single touch payroll is to get your employees online. Um, because you won't be sending uh, POYG summaries um, at year end anymore to your staff, they need a way to get them or get that information so that they can do their tax returns. So you'll need to encourage your staff to create or update their MyGov account um, so that it links to the ATO's online services. This is um, reasonably well adopted already. Um, uh, according to the ATO. So for some staff, it may not be a massive transition, but for some it might might as well. So this will give them access to their year-to-date pay and their super contributions. Um, in addition to this, um, if you're going to select a real quality um, cloud-based payroll system, 
it will without doubt come with a whole bunch of bunch of functionality around employee self-service so they can access pay slips leave balances and all these other things on their mobile or on their pc at any time excuse me for one second Okay, excuse me for that technical difficulty there. So let's talk about best practice. So your staff are at the heart of your business as well. You know, a well-managed payroll function can preserve the organisational culture. It can, can protect against, you know, the ill effects of payroll compliance risk. Um, you know, things like lost productivity, or cash flow pressures, ATO penalties, and even industrial relations action against your business. So let's talk about a few of our best practice tips for payroll. Cloud accounting is basic 101 for modern business efficiency. It really is the key to future fit business. The confronting thing, I suppose, for those of you that are in business is that if you're not on board with cloud, you risk seriously getting left behind. If your competitors are adopting cloud and enjoying really efficient ways to run their business, their margins are going to be better than yours. Um, and this is really scary. So many industries are hyper comp competitive now. Zero Small Business Insight report showed us that 31%, they had 31% growth in subscribers this year. And Zero is only one brand of accounting software. So lots of, lots of businesses are adopting cloud accounting. Single touch payroll readiness is really easily solved by a move to a quality cloud accounting system. It's simple. And in doing so, you don't just get single touch payroll ready, but you enjoy the huge breadth of benefits that comes along with a move to a cloud accounting platform. So the most significant way that cloud is better than desktop for running your business is automation. There's huge efficiencies that come from the way that cloud accounting harnesses automation, machine learning, um, you know, particularly across areas like bank reconciliations, payroll um, and accounts payable. When our clients use cloud accounting, their cash flow is better. They utilize fast digital invoicing that has online payment functionality to wipe out their debtors and stop them from having to burn time chasing payments. Through what we call the ecosystem concept, cloud accounting platforms let you have the best accounting system and then seamlessly plug in the other tools you need to run your business. So you get to choose from the best inventory system, the best CRM, the best point of sale, the best project management software that your business needs and not be something, you know, not be stuck with something, you know, mediocre just because it lives inside the accounting system. And all of these things talk to each other. The way this works with payroll in particular is to connect with tools that bring all the staff management functionality like rostering and timesheets and self-service and payslips and all that sort of stuff together with really powerful things like award interpretation engines that help take the heavy lifting out of checking timesheets and interpreting, you know, those various tricky clauses um, of uh, the modern awards and their pay rates. But it also gives us real time information to guide our business decision making. And this is the key reason why cloud accounting, why a cloud accounting platform is a serious competitive advantage in just about all industries. And of course, cloud gives you the ability to seamlessly connect with those um, that have the expertise to help you either keep things under control so you don't have to worry or to help you take things to the next level in your business. So you think bookkeepers and business mentors and advisors. If you're keen to explore some of these um, benefits of cloud accounting, um, do check out my last webinar. I'll drop you a link um, in the chat box um, in a moment to that um, or I will do it after the webinar. 
Okay, best practice tip number two is user experience is absolutely key. What the heck is user experience? So um, it's not just about what happens back of house with payroll, it's about what happens on the staff's end as well. So these days, everything is mobile. So why wouldn't payroll be the same? If a task is easy or a process is easy, it's much more likely to get done faster. So adopting modern systems that harness mobile technology um, and self-service interfaces for staff to manage leave requests and change the personal details and get pay slips and do timesheets and view rosters makes it so much easier for the staff to follow the process that back of house we need them to follow so that the payroll is accurate and efficient. So best practice tip number three is get ahead of single touch payroll and lodge and pay at the same time. Why wait until the end of the month or the end of the quarter to lodge your PAYG or your super liabilities? If you prepare or get some assistance from your advisor to prepare a cash flow budget where the employee liabilities are paid in full every pay run, not only do you have a better perspective of your business's cash position, but you reduce the risk of penalties from late payment, interest, and certainly upset employees if payment deadlines are missed. You know, not to mention it's probably two less things you need to diarise and think about. Um, it's the perfect way to avoid the cash flow pitfall that we talked about a bit earlier. Number four, reckon, uh, sorry, reconcile your payroll accounts every time you do a pay run. So often checking on the payroll related accounts in the accounting system, so in the general ledger, is a month end or a quarter end task. I hope it's not just a year end task. To best protect against payroll compliance risk and the excessive time sometimes spent correcting the accounting records, we recommend to reconcile these key accounts like PAYG, um, payable, super payable, leave liabilities, all of those sort of things, every single pay run. So this will protect you against the ramifications of the pitfall that we talked about with not being able to see leave records and that sort of thing and, and incorrect um, liabilities on the balance sheet that we talked about a bit earlier. Number five, Register for alerts for any of the legislation changes. So payroll related legislation, particularly the awards can change really frequently and keeping up to date with this is critical to make sure that your staff are paid correctly and that you're minimising that payroll compliance risk and particularly around fair work. So I guess the key legislations um, and regs to think about, this is certainly not an exhaustive list, are around the fair work. NES, so National Employment Standards, um, any of the industry and occupation specific awards, super guarantee rulings, uh, long service, changes to the long service leave legislation, which is state-based, payroll tax, again, and workers' compensation, co compensation which are state-based as well, and of course, any updates from the ATO in general. The sixth, I guess, the last, piece of um, best practice um, advice we have, and we certainly give to our clients, is to consider outsourcing. I talked about this in my last webinar, and I was quite frank, I really don't like payroll. Payroll is such a tricky area, and it's so critical to get it right. You know, if we muck up people's pay, we can muck up the culture in our business. You know, even if we are single touch payroll ready and cloud you know, and cloud enabled, there's still a significant compliance risk around payroll. We talked about it before, you know, the way that um, the Ombudsman is executing the Fair Work Act is getting stronger and stronger. And that risk of being named and shamed, even if you didn't intentionally do the wrong thing is really real. So even if the day-to-day -day payroll seems pretty easy, Payroll always throws curveballs. And I think this is where we need an expert to tap into to make sure that we can work through those tricky spots really safely. 
I said this last time and I will always say it. If it was my business, I would be outsourcing payroll to the export experts in a heartbeat. Um, and being on cloud, of course, allows us to do this. Um, I hate payroll. I do. It is so, I find it so stressful. And I just want to know that everyone, you know, in the business is paid properly all of the time, that they're treated fairly as I've intended them to be, and that my business is protected from compliance risk. By outsourcing to experts, so those that specialise in payroll, you can, you as a business owner can focus on the needs of your business and enjoy the peace of mind that payroll compliance risk is recognised and it's minimised um, with your specialist outsourcing team looking after things like interpreting the awards, you know, um, you have access to knowledge that's always up to date in terms of legislation and best practice as well. Obviously access to a dedicated team in payroll. So you won't have, you wouldn't have the limitations of geographical location or anything physical like that. Continuity of service all year round. So don't have to manage, you know, someone that wants to go on leave or you can't get people paid at Christmas because such and such is on leave. You don't have to train new staff. So that all of that worry is taken away as well. And you don't have to hire more staff as your business grows. So obviously your outsourcing service just scales up as your business grows and as your, um, as the business needs. So I guess let's just consider the following questions for just a minute. Do you outsource your payroll? Do you use payroll software? I hope so. Are you eligible for a single touch payroll exemption? Do you have specific checks in place to prevent payroll processing errors? Does your payroll software interface with the ATO's single touch payroll systems? If you've answered mostly no or not sure to these questions, then you'll need to do some of the following to make sure you're ready for single touch payroll. Have that detailed conversation with your software provider so you know what the lay of the land is. Are we gonna be single touch payroll ready or not? And do I need to look at a different tool? Highly recommend you conduct a risk review around your current payroll processes like we talked about and the HR environment as well, particularly PAYG and super allowances, deductions, all of those kind of things. Let's make sure all of that is nice and tidy. Um, and then anything that's come out of that process, I suppose, making sure you're really promptly addressing anything in there that is a barrier to you being ready for single touch payroll on the 1st of July, 2019. Okay, question time. How have we gone? I'm just gonna pop open and see if we've got some questions here, just bear with me. can't see any at this stage. Did anyone want to ask any, anything at all while we've got a couple of minutes? So a question from Kate that I can answer to an extent, but Jen, you may need to help me with this one. I, uh, I know absolutely 100% that there is a dedicated page to exemptions and deferrals on the ATO's website. Um, the one I definitely know is that you, if you are obviously in an area of Australia where you cannot get access to the internet, obviously you can't comply with single touch payroll. That's pretty straightforward. So there are exemptions in place for that. Um, 
I would recommend you having a look, Kate, at that um, ATO uh, page. I apologise that I don't know the answers off the top of my head, um, but that it is quite thorough um, so that, that you can step through um, you can step through your circumstances and see what the ATO's advice is there. Jody, any suggestions on checks and balances post single touch payroll? So I'm assuming you mean um, what 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 Jody, can I ask you to be a little bit more specific? So do you mean after you've um, lodged, I guess every payroll? Ah, oh, I see, in recording. Okay, so like I said, single touch payroll, every time you lodge a pay run, the ATO gets your year to date information. So um, I'm just recalling um, from my days in finance when I was a CFO, we used to make sure that the last, the very last pay run we would always do, we had done a review of the entire year's payroll again because our processes were pretty tight. We used to do all the recs, every pay run, all that sort of thing. But we used to make sure that any adjustments that were needed would always go through with that last pay run in June so that the year was nice and clean and tidy. So I guess in terms of checks and balances, in terms of wrapping up the year, I would certainly recommend that kind of um, process. It obviously means you need a little bit more time for that last pay run just to do those additional checks and to make sure you're comfortable. Um, but that would be my best advice, unless Jen, you've got any other ideas? No. Okay, um, let me just have a quick look. If there's, here we go. Hi, we have less than, hi Jane. <laughs> we have less than 20 employees, however, are a wholly owned company. So would we be subject to grouping rules? I'm not 100% sure of the answer of that, Jane. However, come 1 July, it doesn't matter if you've got two or 50 employees, you will still need to comply with the single touch payroll requirements. Um, so um, again, there is detailed guidance on the ATO's website around, um, around that. Um, I guess, like, like I just said, I guess the overarching concept here is that everyone needs to be ready by 30 June. Um, so if you're still interested, by all means, go and check out um, that guidance. That's okay. Alex, yes, you make a great point. The MyGov accounts are, the, are a responsibility of every employee and not the responsibility of the company. That's absolutely correct. I guess our um, our comments around that were as an employer, if you can assist your staff in having access to the things that they, they need, that makes for happy staff. So um, certainly, again, there's lots of um, guidance and help on how to um, assist your staff in getting enabled with MyGov um, on the ATO's website. Um, and, you know, as an employer, that's certainly something I would be helping my staff to do. So Daniel has asked if from 1 July 19, is every employer required to move to SDPR? Or is there a certain number of employers? No, it is, it is, every, it is every employer. There is some chatter at the moment um, on the ATO's end around micro businesses. Now, I don't have all the details of what that looks like, but um, I guess if we're talking from a best practice perspective, um, if you're paying payroll, you should, uh, certainly from a best practice perspective, you should be using um, a decent piece of software to do that. And when we're talking about $4 per, you know, something like $4 per employee per pay run, um, it's it, the barriers to that kind of access are incredibly low. Um, so I hope that helps to answer your question, Daniel.
Angie's asked if an employee is not computer savvy, can we still send them payroll advice and payment summaries? Um, I understand that if you use a good piece of payroll software, that you still have the capability to do this. Um, the, the, the software based self service portals will always have their pay slips and whatnot in there. Um, and as far as they're concerned, the correct information will be lodged with the ATO. So when their accountant, I suppose, comes to or comes to do their tax return, the correct information will be pre-filled pre in their tax return. Um, if they like, you know, if they, uh, their process with the, getting their tax done is to give, literally give their accountant that piece of paper that is their payment summary, I don't um, foresee there being barriers in you actually generating them. I guess the point is you, you don't have to anymore, um, but it, I, I acknowledge that certainly there are, um, you know, friends of ours that um, are not particularly computer savvy or, or, or digitally enabled. So um, yes, you can do that, Angie. Um, how are we going over here? So we'll, I just want to read some of these out in case you can't see them. So there's a question about whether, just bear with me, will, Payroll tax be part of STPR. Um, payroll tax is a state-based tax and not part of the ATO, so um, it's not it, it's not affected at this stage by um, STPR. It is obviously one of the um, it's one of the areas that it makes sense for the government systems to talk to each other. So you, if you could imagine you know, you're um, lodging your wage information with the ATO, then it kind of makes sense in a way that that might feed through to the local or the state um, government agencies as well. It does not do that now. Please don't think that's what I'm saying. But, you know, I think that is part of the roadmap for, for that, you know, just to constantly eliminate the double handling of data um, within all the government systems. Um, Alex has asked if overseas companies paying wages in Australia need to comply with STPR um, and yes, they, they will. They will need to comply. Okay. Is there any other questions at this stage? Anna, I did see your hand go up, but I didn't see a question. So if you want to ask something, maybe drop it in the chat. All right, so. Oh, one moment. Okay, Anna, more than happy for you, more than happy to give you some time um, following the webinar. If you would like to reach out, if you have lots of questions, please, um, I'll share my details with you in just a second. And, and, and that goes for everyone. If you do have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or if there's someone that you have a relationship with at BDO, please go ahead and contact them. So um, I, you know, I feel like some of you might perhaps be in a bit of a mad panic as we lead up to the 30th of June to get everything ready with um, single touch payroll. So to help you and to help our clients, uh, we'll be in touch later today with the details of a really cool incentive um, to get in early and get your cloud payroll conversion done before the rush. Um, and um, that, um, that email as well will show you how to request one of our complimentary single touch payroll action plan consultations. And this will help identify precisely what you need to do in your circumstances to get single touch payroll ready for your business. Oh, one more question from uh, Vic. Hi Vic. Um, this is all from 1 July 19, but what about the FY19 summaries issued shortly after. Um, so are you, I'm not sure I understand your 
okay, if you've got less than 20 employees and are not using single touch payroll now, because you didn't have to, um, you will need to provide payment summaries. That is absolutely correct. So you basically round out the financial year. If you, ha if you have less than 20 employees and so didn't have to um, opt in to single touch payroll last year, you round out this year in, I guess, the, uh, the normal way or the old way, which is producing payment summaries, giving them to your staff and lodging with the ATO. And um, once you are um, STP enabled, you commence the FY, oh, it's 2020. You commence the next financial year in that process. Got it, beautiful. Thanks Vic. Okay, so our, um, our the, the cloud team and the single touch payroll team at BDO are highly experienced and we help our clients make the switch um, and they're really, really good at making sure this is a smooth and seamless experience for the business and everyone involved, so the staff as well. Um, the team will work with you to come up with the best plan of attack for getting your business STP ready. So when June 30 does roll around, you can be really comfortable that everything's in order and maybe have a bit of a giggle with everyone else that's kind of scrambling for the deadline. So if you did enjoy the content today, please make sure you follow us um, on social media as, as always. And um, again, happy for you to uh, reach out to me on any of those um, platforms. Um, that, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I did um, reference this particular wonderful lady in my last webinar, but a great mate of mine, Jerry Wambeek, she loves to sign off with life is better in, in the cloud. And again, I'm going to borrow her idea. So it's not just the cloud, but absolutely payroll is better in the cloud. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.